What's up, everybody? It's KR086. Dude, okay, look. I'm only... I, I, I'm not using <laughs> uh, my video right now because of the fact that I still don't have a ring light yet. But I had to talk about this. <laughs> oh. So, here's the thing. I'm watching... I've been watching... Uh, the Actman's recent video uploaded on the 2nd of October. <laughs> and it's, uh, every video game is woke, apparently. That's the, uh, that's the title of the video, okay? And in it, he's looking at a list, a curated list of games by Woke Content Detector, okay? Woke Content Detector's curated list of games and basically it has basically so many I, I i looked at it myself i still am watching the video as the recording of this video but i had like half like not even halfway through the video i'm like seven minutes into the video and i had to go and search for this list of woke games and boy <laughs> there are so many games that they consider woke as in not recommended and then there's also the informational ones and then of course there are blue ones okay well uh, let me let me kind of give you an idea okay let me kind of give you guys idea of how bad this is okay look <laughs> ah, it's so much yellow red like okay so red is not recommended for sane people for uh people who are anti-woke um yellow is informational and blue is recommended okay that's how that's how you get right mostly recommended games have no woke content most of these non no woke content are old game older games like the the original witcher uh the witcher enhanced edition director's cut and the witcher 2 assassin's king uh, assassins of kings enhanced um the original borderlands metro and all that stuff most of these games of course they're not gonna have any woke content they're just um random games i mean sid meyer civilization 5 uh, games that you just fight there's it doesn't seem like there's that much of a story um no extra stuff this is where it gets funny okay Th these are some of the things where it gets funny so warframe warframe it has a story but it's not like it's nothing to really uh go crazy with right and yet <laughs> um i play warframe it's free to play you know you just pretty much attacking things this is why it's not recommended. Contains overtly pro LGBTQ messaging, various pride frat pride flag items. Various pride flag items. That's the reason why it's overtly pro LGBTQ plus messaging. Is that what you're trying to say? Cause that makes no freaking sense. Final Fantasy VII is informational. Contains subtly Pro LGBTQ plus messaging contains subtly pro climate action messaging, forced cross dressing, and you start the game working for an eco terrorism group. Wow! Wow! <laughs> I mean, they're not wrong, but still, I mean. You're talking about one of the most funniest scenes in the game of the original Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> you're, 
you're talking about one of the most famous, funniest scenes. Like, me and my sister make fun of that scene all the time. Where, like, Cloud, you dress up as Cloud. Uh, you dress, uh, Cloud dresses up in a suit. You can make it uh, even better so you can, uh, um, you can get even more items to make Cloud the most attractive woman to Don Corneo and all that stuff and then next thing you know all you have to, you don't have to fight any battles you can go straight to Don Corneo you have this funny scene where he's trying to like jump your bones and then the girl the other girls walk in and you're just like and they all do their little thing where like uh I think Tifa says uh talk or they're trying to like get some information out of him and they say talk or uh, I think Eric says, I'll bash him in. Okay. Talking about his nuts. <laughs> um, uh, like Tifa says something on like talk or I'll smash him. Or I think cloud is the one that freaks him out the most talk or I'll cut it off. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And yet, you call it problematic. <laughs> oh, Final Fantasy V. The fact that Fair is dressed as a man. Wow. Bruh, bruh. And Final Fantasy... I'm trying to... Oh, Final Fantasy Nine, Queena. Who, you know, has an ambiguous gender. That's a big issue. Contains LGBTQ plus themes with no specific message. The signifier used for this character varies by localization. What? An optional character, by the way. Queena is an optional character. You don't have to get Queena at all in the game, throughout the game. Oh, goodness gracious. Then, uh, oh, this is the big, this is my favorite favorite no this is not my favorite thing this is just a little bit of my like why are you so why are you guys so like against anything when it comes to this woke stuff okay marvel spider-man remastered a fantastic game i remember when it first came out i think i was i think it was like 2018 i got that game okay me and my friend ran were talking about how good how great this game is he was asking me how good the game was and it was so good convertly contains overtly pro lgbt imagery prominently displayed pride flags what the heck okay i i really saw any of the pride flags you can barely see them throughout the game you have to look for them Okay, maybe they might put them out on like a, a, a short update if you're connected to the internet on Pride, uh, during Pride Month. I don't know. But throughout my entire like playthrough of the original game, of the original Marvel Spider-Man remastered, uh, original Marvel Spider-Man in general, didn't see any Pride flags. Oh, Miles Morales. Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Contains overtly pro LGBTQ messaging. Contains overtly pro DEI messaging. Prominently displayed pride and BLM flags. Uh, came out in 2022. 2022. Because I remember I had to get. No, it came out earlier. I feel like. Did it? Did it come out in 2022? Hold on. Let me. Let me double check. Let me double check. Okay. The Marvel Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Miles. Morales. Marvel Spider-Man. Miles Morales came out in 2020. This is what the, they're saying 2022 release year. It came out in 2020 because I remember uh, PS5 had just came out. 
I couldn't get, I couldn't afford one just yet. And, you know, I was, I was unsure if they were going to actually have it on PS4 as well, but they did, thankfully. And yet, uh, I don't remember seeing that many Pride flags. I do recall some of the BLM flags, but it wasn't that prominent. Uh, also, the new PLC main character overshadows Peter Parker. How does he overshadow Peter Parker when Peter Parker isn't even in the game? They actually have a great explanation as to why he's out of the game for most of the game. You only see him in like the first bit of the game and then the finale of the game. The end of the game. Where he's sitting there just telling Miles, hey, you did good, bud. And you've come into your own. Like... Miles is not trying to over my the character of Miles does not overshadow Peter Parker. He's just there. He's learning from Peter Parker. He's being taught by Peter Parker. And this is coming from a guy who's a huge fan of Peter Parker. Yes, I'm black, but guess what? I'm a huge fan of Peter Parker. And yet I don't see him overshadowing. If anything, he's He's just another Spider-Man, another person for other people to like be fond of. And yet people are making a big deal out of Miles Morales. Oh my God. There are two separate Spider-Man books. Neither one overshadows the other. I mean, the only, well, technically Peter Parker still overshadows Miles Morales just because of the fact that it's Peter Parker. He was the original Spider-Man. Miles Morales is another, a separate Spider-Man. It's a title it can be given. Okay, but again, all these other blue, these blue titles, one, I have seen some of them. Two, I've never heard, uh, some of them I've seen and played. A little bit some of them i i could care less about like freddy fish and luther's maze madness this came out according to them it came out in 1996 1994 i'm i don't think i would ever play it again <laughs> oh good lord uh, quake I'll, I'll give you quake wait quake too what the heck Contains only pro LGBTQ plus imagery. This remaster includes a rainbow flag on the pod. The player comes out of during the first mission. It was not there in the original. What? Okay, the Doom. Okay, at least the Doom contains no wokeness. Half Life. The original Half-Life, I can understand. Half-Life 2, I'm not so sure. It's been a minute since I played those games. I have never beat them. But eh. Digimon Survive. Some Digimon, Digimon can dig, digivolve from male-coded to female-coded or vice versa. They're Digimon. They're made-up creatures. How is that even... What does that even matter? The King of Fighters uh, 15 it contains subtly pro LGBTQ messaging. Ash is an effeminate, effeminate male with an androgynous disappear. Really? Really? Oh, and oh, this is getting wild. Informational Yakuza Kiwami. Yakuza, Zero. Yakuza 3 Remastered contains subtly pro LGBTQ messaging. Really, people? Really? Wait, I, I I seem to recall that, well, like a dragon, Yakuza. Yakuza like a dragon. You know, the first game with uh, Ichiban. That was in the red, if I remember correctly. I can find it again. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Maybe I can just look for it. Hold on.
It's not hard to find things, I swear. Nope, not switching tabs. Just, oh, what? Can't look through it like that. Ah, I would talk a little bit more. Tell us from the Borderlands. The character Zero is non-binary and uses data and pros. You play a Zero in Borderlands 2. And last time I checked, Borderlands 2. Where's Borderlands? Where's Borderlands? Uh, Borderlands 2 is contains suddenly pro <laughs> is informational. What? <laughs> But this is the this is the best one right here. Okay, this is the one that made me go. This was the one that made me laugh my ass off. Hogwarts Legacy is woke, people. It's woke. It's not recommended. Contains overtly pro LGBTQ messaging. Contains overtly pro DEI messaging. Eighteen hundred Scotland somehow has diverse LGBTQ plus characters. Uses body type instead of biological sex I remember when Hogwarts Legacy came out and supposedly it was the most anti-woke thing in the world can you, can you remember that you remember that freaking the LGBTQ community had so much issue with Hogwarts Legacy coming out they were like mad because of the fact that it was connected to JK Rowling and all that stuff and if you were to play Hogwarts Legacy you're a transphobe remember that remember why when everybody was trying to cancel anybody who tried to play who bought played or tried to stream Hogwarts Legacy and yet bro we're calling it woke our world is woke is now woke. Elden Ring is woke, people. It's not recommended. Elden Ring. <laughs> oh my God. Elden Ring, people. Elden Ring. Look, people. <laughs> Look. Whoever made this list, because it has over 1,400. It, they, they went through 1,400. Over 1,400 video games. From the 90s to now. As, as far as I've seen so far. Trying to decide what's woke and what's not woke. You do realize that the term woke, okay, became very based in society in like, what, 2016 or something like that? Somebody just started using the word as a way of saying, <laughs> they were using it out of context, first and foremost. Like, woke is being aware of shit going down. And yet, <sighs> most people fail to realize that, like, some of the, 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 some of the wording that people are using, conservatives are using, Andrew Tate is using, and all that stuff, basically mean the exact same thing as being woke. It's just being used. In a, from a different side. They're using a different word for what they're saying. Like, Andrew Tate saying anything about, like, um, uh, people being in the Matrix or something like that. It's just him saying that he's aware of things. It's just saying that he's being woke to what the government or all that stuff is going through. People. Y'all have y'all have taken a word and y'all call it woke. Y'all say something 
y'all y'all took a word put it completely out of context and then make it into this whole little thing when you're doing the exact same thing that the word was actually meant for what is wrong with you people like i i, I tried to make a video uh because i noticed a trend going on with uh a lot of different like some of some of the youtubers that i had started watching uh this year and i thought most of the stuff that they were saying was actually uh worth hearing but then i'm starting to notice that they're not talking to like these particular gaming youtubers i'm not talking about the game i'm not talking about the gameplay they're not being journalists they're not being gameplay gaming journalists as they claim as they start to claim to be on these youtube streams they're they're only talking about the push of DEI and yes while I'll, I will admit that like some of the some of the stuff that was being shoved down our throats when it comes to DEI and game media and all that stuff was unbearable because it's getting shoved in our throats it felt like it was being pushed first over everything else over the story over the gameplay and all that stuff while I while I hated it, and while I hated some of the gaming journalists in actual like publications like uh, Game Informer or IGN and all that stuff, just using uh, using some kind of DEI issue that they have with the game, the fact that there wasn't enough DE uh, diversity, in equity, and inclusion in the game not enough representation in a certain game but never talking about how good the actual gameplay was how what the game is about what the story if the story actually fits in a narrative fashion yeah i got a little upset but now i'm starting to realize that the very people that i thought were actually trying to uh were actually trying to say that like we need to get gaming journalism back on track are doing the exact same thing but the reverse of it now everything's more woke i i literally watched the trailer for ghost of yote right and then immediately i see people like smash jt immediately get online and talk about erica ishii's uh uh, uh her ishii I hope I'm not butchering her name. Talking about how she's an activist and all that stuff. And now everybody's like hating her on her. And I'm sitting there thinking like in my head, like, well, I just recently saw the whole Mortal Kombat 1 Chaos Reigns thing. And I get that she's a uh, part of the LGBTQ community. I get that she's perfectly fine with any pronouns being used for her or them or they, you know. I get that, but I didn't see that it was translating into her role as the female sector. And you also got to remember, Mortal Kombat 1 takes place in an alternate universe. So I'm perfectly fine with sector being different. Heck, Johnny Cage is different. We don't see Sonya in the game at all, except for as a cameo character. And so Johnny Cage is not with Sonya. Liu Kang is not with katana because she's a completely different katana from who he fell in love with his katana is now a titan just like all the other mortal kombat characters from the past you know after mortal kombat 9 they're all titans basically at this point they all have their own different universes we're just looking at Liu Kang's version I, I, I really think that like people are taking things out way too far on both sides. Okay, this is why like this is this is what I can't stand. And like you, you get people like Andy Pants Gaming who <coughs> who went after the Actman who is a normal person who who probably thinks just like me. I just want to know about the gameplay. And if the game is good, I'm going to play it. If the game is not good, I'm not going to play it. I don't care too much 
I mean, yeah, I will care if there's too much DEI being shoved down, being put forefront at the forefront of a game. But at the end of the day, if the game is good, if I don't feel like I'm being like pressured into this, that, or the third, if, if I don't feel like I, I'm getting bogged down by a whole bunch of representation all at the start and that's the main focus compared to the actual gameplay of a game guess what i'm perfectly fine i can play through a game games have all video games since the beginning since video games became a thing have always been kind of diverse and if you actually read the list you actually notice that all the games that we've actually loved and enjoyed for the longest period of time, they have been, they have been diverse. They have been quote unquote woke, not nearly as woke as these people are making it out to seem, but we were able to like play through these games and not have any issues with them until all of a sudden now we have this huge divide between the people, the wokes and, to, and the anti-wokes. And nobody is actually paying attention to, hey, is the gameplay solid? Is the, is the story compelling? Only the few and the, the true gamers out there are being like, yeah, I just want a, I, I want a really engaging game that can actually get me out of my, out of my reality for a little bit. Is it? I could care less about all this other stuff. I don't care if anything is anti woke or woke. I don't really care. Just give me a good game to play. <sighs> like, who knows? I, I bet you somebody's gonna say that the new Legend of Zelda <laughs> Echoes of Wisdom is gonna it is it, woke. at this point and all because of the fact that hey for the first time in a long time for the first time ever in a legend of zelda game you play as zelda throughout the entire game somebody's probably gonna call it what me on the end I can't wait to get my hands on that game because it looks cool. I think the gameplay is fascinating. I mean, I've been watching Austin John plays. Uh, play through his walkthrough and like, it just makes me want to play the game even more. Even though I'm getting spoiled, I it makes me want to play the game even more. Good Lord. But somebody else is going to call it woke. All because, hey, guess what? You're playing as a girl now. Y'all dumb. Y'all dumb. Anyways, uh, that's it for this video today. Oh, I'm going to get back to watching the act man talk about this game because I'm uh, talking about this freaking list because good Lord, even I, I bet you he's laughing his butt off. I'm I'm hoping that he he points out the Hogwarts legacy thing because God dang it. <laughs> Am I that the most hilarious one of all? You're calling Hogwarts Legacy woke and the people and when Hogwarts Legacy came out, people were talking about how it was how it was so transphobic. And more and I have the reason why most people are buying it was because of the fact that they're transphobes. And here's the thing. Nobody was a Anybody who played that game wasn't thinking about it as, hey, I'm transphobic. That's why I want to play the game. No, I bought the game because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I bought the game for, I, I, I let my roommate have my PS4 so she could play it. So she, because she's a huge Harry Potter fan. Okay, we enjoyed the story. Who cares? We can separate. A lot of us can separate the artist. The art from the artist. Okay. And in this case, like, shoot, I will always, I will always enjoy Harry Potter. It was a great story. 
I love the entire book series. I love the entire movie series. And I liked Hogwarts Legacy. Heck, I need to replay. I need to start that thing back up because heck, I still haven't finished it. Okay, it was long. It's a long game to me at least. Okay, and I am a 38 year old man. Look, I'm sorry, but like, you got, everybody's got to ring this stuff in, okay? I'm talking about conservatives and liberals. Y'all got to start reining shit in. Start being, start realizing that there is more to life than this. Either you have to be fully on conservative side or fully on liberal side. Y'all are dumb. <sighs> Oh, because at this point, you're pretty much <laughs> agreeing with each other and you don't realize that you're agreeing with each other. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. You guys have a good night. Okay, <laughs> bye.